Rice farmers throughout the continent work hard to get a good crop every year. One of the major problems they face are weeds. Weeds make preparing the land difficult. Weeds also take up water and nutrients from the soil that would otherwise benefit your crop. This in turn reduces rice yields. As we know that effective weed control could increase yields by more than 50%, it's surely worthwhile taking a closer look. In this module we'll learn how to control weeds more effectively. The focus will be on rice grown in inland valleys and irrigated systems. But some of the principles also apply to upland crops. First of all, not all weeds are the same. By knowing your enemy, half the battle is won. Distinguishing between annual and perennial weeds is important, as it determines which control measures will be effective and which ones won't. So what's the difference between annual and perennial weeds? Well, simply put, annual weeds live less than one year and die after they produce seeds. Therefore, you need to remove weeds before they flower. Perennial weeds, on the other hand, continue to grow after seed production sometimes for several years. They have special roots such as tubers that survive and spread easily when plowing the land. Methods to prevent seed spreading have less effect on perennial weeds. To kill them you have to target their roots. <laughs> I thank God that I can teach you a few things. Once the first rains start in May, you take the opportunity to plough your field. When you have this perennial weed digger in your field, its shallow roots will be exposed to the air after tillage. But that isn't enough. You then hit the clods with a small hoe, extract the roots and pile them. Others collect them in baskets and make big heaps. After two weeks of sun drying, the heaps are burnt and will serve as organic manure. This is one way of controlling digger. If you can have three crops per year in your field, there'll be less weeds. After maize, we grow rice, followed by potatoes. If you continue this cycle for two to three years, you'll have no more weed problems. If you work in this way, you can control digger and other perennial weeds. Now that we know the different types of weeds, let's see how various activities contribute to reducing them. Good weed management starts before planting your rice and needs good planning. In general, weeds can be managed by carefully preparing the land, weeding irrigation canals and field margins, using good and clean seeds, strengthening your rice to compete with weeds, flooding your field during the vegetative stage, and finally, weeding by hand, tools or herbicides. To prevent fields from becoming infested by weeds, 
Carefully prepare your land. Properly plough, level and flood your field. Ploughing buries weed seeds to depths from which they cannot germinate anymore. It also uproots weeds, after which they dry out and die. Flooding the field for two weeks will kill most of the existing weeds. But for flooding to be effective, your field has to be perfectly level. If parts of the land are not under water, weeds will grow there and later on infest other parts of your field. If water can be managed effectively, you may flood your field briefly after the first land preparation. After drainage and once the young weed seedlings have developed, you may till your land a second time to kill all weeds and then flood again before sowing your rice. This technique is mainly done in irrigated systems with good water control. So the first step in managing weeds is to carefully prepare your field. A clean field is the start of a good crop. As weeds spread by seeds, you know it's important that all neighbours need to keep their land clean. Let's hear how rice farmers in the village of Zeguso developed rules to ensure that all who work in the inland valley keep their fields clean. We established rules to allocate land. Those who do not properly maintain his or her plot are sanctioned and have to pay a fine of 5,000 CFAs. If it doesn't improve in the second year, the farmer will lose his or her plot and the land will be allocated to someone else. All farmers now take good care of keeping their fields clean. Because of this, rice production has increased in the village. After we established the rules, many improve their cultivation practices. Everybody knows that when a plot is not well kept, it will not give the same yield as a clean field. And no one wants to stay behind. So far we've learned that weeds can multiply by seeds and sometimes by their roots in the case of perennial weeds. We also saw how we can reduce weeds by properly and timely preparing our land. For the same reason, it's important to keep irrigation canals and field margins clean from weeds, as their seeds may enter the field through irrigation water and wind. Ideally, flush the irrigation canals first before using the water to flood your field. By doing so, seeds that ended up in the canal will not enter your fields. So weed seeds can come from various sources. But have you ever realized that you also risk sowing weeds with your rice seed? Therefore always use seed that's free from weed seeds. Use healthy seed that was harvested, dried and stored properly as this will germinate well. Quality seed also gives stronger plants that can better cope with weeds. When direct seeding, you can kick-start your crop by pre-germinating the seeds before sowing. Put your seed in water, remove the ones that float, and leave them overnight so they can soak up water. Drain them the next morning and let them germinate for about two days. Now let's see how you can further help your crop to compete with weeds by selecting a good variety, planting method and density. Some varieties tiller more than others. Also, varieties that tiller well at an early stage suppress weeds more easily. You can test different varieties with your neighbours and compare results. Your crop can also better compete with weeds if you transplant or sow pre-germinated seeds into a shallow layer of water. Transplanting two-week-old seedlings gives rice a time advantage over weeds. 
if time or labor is limited, a second best alternative is direct seeding of pre-germinated seeds. In both cases, the water layer will reduce weed emergence and enhance the competitive advantage of rice over weeds. The more space you leave between rice plants, the easier it will be for weeds to grow. However, if you plant too dense, your rice will give fewer tillers, resulting in lower yields. Under lowland conditions, the planting distance can be as low as 15 centimeters, but more often 20 centimeters is taken as a guide. Try out what gives the best results under your conditions. Unlike rice, most plants do not grow well in water. Water is therefore ideally suited to control weeds. If possible, maintain a layer of water in the field during the vegetative stage. Weed seeds in the soil will not be able to germinate when continuously under water. Of course, you need to drain your field if you want to apply herbicides or fertilizer. In addition, you can eliminate weeds by hand, tools, or with herbicides. This is easiest if the rice grows in lines. Also, as you know where to expect rice and where not, sowing in rows helps to quickly distinguish weed seedlings from rice seedlings, even those that resemble rice. Rice is transplanted at 20 centimeter intervals. This makes it easier to walk in between the plants when weeding without trampling on the rice plants. When you broadcast the seed, the density is so high that you inevitably step on the rice plants. The time of weeding is very important. Weeds are most harmful in the first six weeks. When direct sowing, weed for the first time after three weeks. This is when rice plants have about four leaves. Two to three weeks later, around tillering, you should weed a second time. With transplanted rice, you only need to weed once at the onset of tillering. Remember, it's at the tillering stage that it's best to apply nitrogen to increase the number of tillers and hence boost our yield. At this stage, there should be no weeds, as we don't want to fertilize the weeds. 15 days after transplanting, you have to weed and apply nitrogen fertilizer, which we call niebe. When you apply niebe, the rice tillers well. Manual weeding benefits the crop. In a weed-free field, all the fertilizers that you apply go only to the rice crop. When there's no competition from weeds, the rice will grow well and yield a good crop. Herbicides can also be used. These are chemicals that kill weeds. Herbicides should be used with great care as they are toxic and can damage your health, the crop and the environment. Many different types of herbicides exist and not all are suitable to control all weeds. If you decide to use herbicides, uproot the most problematic weed in your field and ask your pesticide dealer what would be the most appropriate product. Also, ask your extension agent. Remember, herbicides need to be applied properly to be effective. Strictly following the instructions on the label is of utmost importance. In summary, we've learned that weeds reduce rice yields. However, complete elimination of weeds is neither realistic nor necessary. Weeds should therefore be managed to acceptable levels. Let's repeat the key interventions. 
properly prepare the land by ploughing, levelling and flooding. Prevent weed infestation by cleaning irrigation canals and field margins. Use quality seed and float out bad seeds. Use good varieties and either transplant or pre-germinate seeds in the case of direct seeding. And remember that rice grown in lines makes weeding easier. Maintain water in your field during the vegetative stage to prevent weed seeds germinating. Keep your field free of weeds at the onset of tillering, as this stage largely determines your future yield. And finally, prevent weeds from producing seeds to benefit subsequent crops. Managing weeds can be achieved. If we all collaborate and share experiences, we'll be able to do it more effectively. Hello.